Good day. This is our introduction to microbiology. We will be discussing the first chapter in Visualizing Microbiology, A Healthy Perspective by Rodney Anderson and Linda Young, The Microbial World. So we have here our normal, normal size world, and then we also have the microbial world. So in our normal size world, basically these are the things that we can see with our naked eye. But in this microbial world, these are made up of things that are very small, but we need aids, we need uh, microscopes, electron microscopes to actually see them. So microbiology is the study of these uh, microbial worlds, the things that live in this microbial world. It's the study of microbes. So these microbes are invisible to the naked eye. They, uh, contrary to what others believe, they're actually the most dominant life form on the planet because they're much more, they're much, much uh, more uh, in terms of population than us and also in terms of species. There are many microbes that are yet to be discovered. And uh, we still don't know exactly uh, who they are or we still haven't characterized all of them because there are just too many. So they are a very diverse group of organisms. Uh, although they are very diverse, or they are very large in terms of population and numbers, they are very, very small. So how small could a microbe be? So in terms of perspective, let's look at these uh, analogies. So the, uh, the smallest, uh, not exactly the smallest, but one of the smallest uh, microbes, because uh, even in the case of viruses, there are large viruses, there are actually smaller viruses. So if a virus is a typical virus, was the size of a period at the end of this sentence. So imagine it's the size of this period here, this particular period here. So if that's the size of the virus, the size of or the diameter of a cell, a single cell of your Staphylococcus aureus shown here will be, if this is the virus, the size of the virus, this will be the size of your Staphylococcus aureus, the diameter of a garden pea. Now for a red blood cell, your your own red blood cells. If uh, if your virus is the size of this uh, small period, it's the size of this softball. That's your red blood cells. Uh, in terms of uh, analogy, range analogy. And then if you have say the diameter of a pin head, the pins that you use to tap on your cork board. If this the period is uh, if the virus is the size of this period, the pin head will be as large as a school bus or the height of a child. For a virus, it's as high as Mount Everest. So basically that's how small they are. We are looking at them in terms of micrometers. That's one thousand of a millimeter. And the one millimeter is almost that single um, uh, peak on the uh, ruler. So that's very, very small. That's actually a single, almost a single line in your ruler. And then your uh, imagine 1,000 of that. That's your Staphylococcus aureus range. So there are several categories of microbes. We have the non-cellular and the cellular microbes. The non-cellular, they are the microbes that are not composed of or doesn't really or weren't able to make, uh, it's not made up of cells or has no cellular component at all. So examples of that are viruses, viroids, and prions. So viruses, they are just uh, genetic materials uh, enveloped in a protein coat and sometimes a lipid, uh, a lipid coating as well in the case of the coronavirus. So here are some examples of your viruses. So you have here the bacteriophage, which I usually uh, con uh, consider or uh, actually it's very similar to the aliens that attack Earth. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have watched ju the first Justice League uh, cartoons way back years ago. Anyway, uh, these are the different virus. So that's adenovirus here. And then this is the human immunodeficiency virus. So again, like the coronavirus, it's encapsulated with a protein code. It's just that coronavirus is a very prominent spike. And then for the prions, prions are actually, uh, they are infectious agents, but they are just made up of proteins. So for the cellular uh, category, we have here, the uh, it can be divided into the prokaryotic cells. So basically these are the bacteria here. And here are your eukaryotic uh, examples. This is a planaria. 
So these are the protists. These are single-celled um, single eukaryotic organisms. So if you have, uh, let's look at this one in terms of sizes. So for microbial size, we have your uh, simple, the simplest or in terms of complexity is a simple microbe. So you have here your uh, basically a virus. So you have just the genetic material, a protein covering that and your uh, covering, a peptomer covering. So that means it's a protein, uh, encaps uh, protein oligomer encapsulating the protein coat shell. And then we have, uh, this, if this is the virus, this is your cell, so a bit larger. So the, uh, in terms of the virus, we are talking about nanometer range. That's uh, 10 lays to the negative nine of a meter. That means it's 1,000 of a micrometer or 1 millionth of a millimeter. Okay, so now let's move on to the cells. So the cell size, this is a pro, uh, prokaryotic or a normal uh, cell size. So this is in micrometer range. So you have here your capsules, genetic materials, and nucleoid regions. So this is a prokaryotic cell. So you have a nucleoid regions instead of a real nucleus. They're encapsulated in the cell wall. So they are in the micrometer size. Now, sorry, this is your, uh, a larger one. This is usually, um, eukaryotic cells. So this is a larger, more complex microorganism, but still it's a microbe. So it's around uh, 35 micrometers. So this is one micrometer, this is 35 micrometer. So this is a more complex one. Prokaryotes are in this category, but the eukaryotes are in this. So remember, eukaryotes are the ones that has the organelles, the nucleus, the membrane-bound organelles. Okay, so let's look deeper into the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. So this is just a review of your general biology. If you remember your prokaryotic cells, they lack nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. So we have several types of prokaryotic cells. We have the archaea. They live, uh, these are the organisms that live or that are found in extreme environments. So they are considered the Earth's first organism because um, back when the Earth was young, the, the environment is very extreme. It's either very, very, very hot, very high salinity or very, very cold. So, and then we also have the bacteria. These are the most common we, uh, we talk about or the most common that we uh, know about with regards to prokaryotic cells. And when we talk about uh, micro, microorganisms, the first thing that comes to mind is the bacteria. So bacteria, they can cause disease, but most bacteria can also be beneficial to life. In fact, this, uh, this topic or rather our course is industrial microbiology. So we will be talking about bacterias and microorganisms that are being used, that are beneficial to humans. Okay, so for our eukaryotic cells, the eukaryotic cells contain a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. They are 10 to 100 times larger than prokaryotes. So some examples of them are the fungi, which usually acts as the composers, the photosynthetic algae. These are the ones that can, under, that can produce sugars from uh, basically from sunlight. So you have photosynthesis here. And then we have the protozoans. These are unicellular organisms with animal-like characteristics. That's why it's called protozoans. Zoans or zoo, that means it's animal. So proto, that's the uh, prototype. It's uh, an earlier version, so-called earlier version of an, of an animal. And then we have the helminids. These are very, very small worms, eggs, and juvenile stages of other larger organisms that when they are small or, or when they are eggs, they are microscopic. So they are the helminids. So the uh, microorganisms are the dominant life form of Earth. So how do we say that it's a dominant life form? So this is a logarithmic uh, graph. So for the humans, we are, um, this is our uh, dry biomass. This is not, this is not in terms of uh, individual population uh, numbers, but this is in terms of weight. So the humans, because we are large, Okay, and then as well as the livestock and crops. But when we when we uh, when we uh, get the weights of all the bacteria and the non-bacteria microorganisms, they are actually much higher in the graph than us. So the bacteria have shaped our planet. So back when uh, the Earth was young, there wasn't any. Uh, let's say, for example, here, but, uh, when the Earth was young, there wasn't any. Um, oxygen back then, but when uh, the photosynth uh, photosynthesis started from the first algae, we have the 
uh, they produced oxygen and they actually caused the, the most severe extinction event, uh, one of the most severe extinction event in Earth where they killed almost all of the organisms because they produced the toxic oxygen. So for us, apparently in this, um, in our era, so we have here the clouds that are filled with some of the bacteria found in the plants in the soil. So we also have bacteria in the, because they are very, very small. They can be airborne. Uh, they, can, um, they can be airborne uh, within small particles of condensations. And then we have ruminant animals that have a complex digestive system containing billions of microorganisms that helps in the digestion. Actually, not only in the ruminant animals, but also in our own gut. We have our own microbiota inside our gut. And this helps us not only in digestion, but they have also been linked to the immune system, to the functions of the immune system. And then we also have the bacteria associated with the roots of the plants, the clover roots that convert uh, nitrogen gas into usable form. So this is a nitrogen fixing bacteria. So this help promote plant growth because most of the nitrogen is in terms of the very, very inert nitrogen gas. And we cannot use them, but we need to convert them into the organic nitrogen uh, forms or even in uh, nitrates or your ammonia. So the, the ones that convert them are the bacteria. So they are considered the first life forms on earth. So we have here your, um, in the Earth's timeline. So uh, this is uh, based on the theory of the first uh, microorganism. So you have your uh, appearance of the, uh, the building blocks, the, uh, the building blocks macromolecules based on the theory. And then, um, but when you look at the fossil record, we have, we, see, we saw the first prokaryotic cells. It's actually bacteria that we saw first before any complex organisms. And then you have the photosynthetic algae that, that, uh, that came next, which uh, they are the ones that actually help develop the atmosphere by producing the oxygen gas. And they are also uh, believed to have developed the ozone layer. And then we have the aerobic eukaryotic organisms. So you have here the, uh, and then from the, uh, after the uh, appearance of the microbes, you have here the appearance of your, uh, the appearance of the complex organisms like humans, okay? So that's it for this lecture or this part of the lecture. So we will continue on the lecture with the next part.